Hello students, in this video we'll discuss single and double dot product operations for dyadic tensors. Let's recall that if we're given the standard basis, I, J, and K, we introduce some tensor notation to make our life a little bit easier. We call I, J, and K delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3, so there's no confusion here. So delta 1 for I, delta 2 for J, delta 3 for K, right? And then we have then a dyadic tensor. Again, I'm sort of intentionally avoiding this idea of covariant and contravariant just for the time being until we get more comfortable with that. Is an expression in the form tau bar bar, which is just the sum over i, the sum over j, and then tau i j, delta i hat, delta j hat. And these formal products, delta i hat, delta j hat, these are just the unit dyads. So these are the unit dyads. Okay, so they look like i hat times i hat, k hat times j hat, j hat times k hat, and all those nine combinations of i and j are different unit dyads. So none of them are the same. And so we're interested now in saying, when is it the case that there is some sort of symmetry in these dyadic tensors, and how can I exploit that symmetry? All right. So that's what a dyadic tensor is, right? And so, of course, for those of you who are playing along at home, you could say, well, like, oh, if that's only a dyadic tensor, I could easily define a triadic tensor to be things of the form tau bar 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 i j k tau i j k delta i hat and delta j hat delta k hat, and you'd be on the right track, okay? But to keep things sort of compact and tidy, let's just focus on these dyadic tensors for the time being before we go on to um, more advanced things. All right, and so now I would like to do some algebraic operations on these things. So for example, we can do the typical algebraic operations, just addition of two dyadic tensors. So if I had tau bar bar plus sigma bar bar, which would be the sum over i and j, and then I'm going to sort of compact by my sums of tau i j delta i hat delta j hat plus the sum over i and j of sigma i j delta i hat delta j hat, that would be, by definition, as you would you expect it to be, just the sum over i and j of what? Of tau i j plus sigma i j delta i hat delta j hat. And that's how you add two dyadic tensors together. And then, of course, how would you scale a dyadic tensor? Well, that would be just equally as easy, right? So the scaling would be as follows. So scaling, if I said, what's lambda times tau bar bar? Well, that would be just the sum over i and j of lambda tau i j delta i hat delta j hat, right? And so that makes these, of course, you would just scale all the components, tau i j, by that lambda, and that would be the scaling, right? So that's a very trivial thing to that we would define, right? And so with this addition and the scaling, the space of dyadic tensors forms a, has a vector space structure over R, right? So this is a, what we would say is a vector space over R. Great. And so now I want to examine some of the multiplications or the contractions that can exist on these spaces. And so what we're going to do is the following. So I'm going to define single dot and double dot operations. So single dot operations, or you would call these sort of one contractions. Okay. And so how would I define this? I'm going to define it on the basis, on this unit dyadic basis, right? And so I should say, with this definition, with this linear structure, these unit dyads form a basis of the space, right? Okay? So if I had delta i hat dot delta j hat delta k hat, by definition, this single dot product of this vector with the unit dyad would be what? This would be, by definition, delta i j, the Kronecker symbol, delta k hat. So if you do a dot product of a vector quantity with a dyadic tensor quantity, you get back to a vector quantity. And similarly, if I did it like this, if I did delta i hat delta j hat dot delta k hat, that would be delta i and then delta j k, right? So you can see these things are going to be different based on the order, right? So in other words, there's going to be some sort of transposition that goes on when we do this, okay? So those are single dots, and then I can also do a double dot, right? So that's a, I'll uh, tell you what the double dot operation is, so double dot operation, as you, what you expect. Okay. 
And so if I had a delta I, delta J, dot delta K, delta L, and then I had a double dot here with two dots, that's a double dot operation. And the, for those of you who have seen some mechanics or some fluid mechanics, this operator comes up a lot when you're doing like when you're doing operations with the Navier-Stokes equations or the or the incompressible uh, Navier-Stokes or the inviscid Euler equations. When fluid mechanics, these things occur a lot when you're doing the gradient formulation of the of the velocity term, which is in the form of a dyadic tensor, basically. Okay. So will this be? This is going to be a delta I L. You do the outers and then you do the inner delta. JK like that. Okay, so in other words, when you do a double dot product of two diac tensors, you get back down to a scalar quantity. Okay, excellent. All right, and of course, we can also do the same thing with a single dot. There's one last one that we can do over here. Also, we would have what? Also, we would have if I had delta I, delta J, single dot with delta K, delta L, that would output a what? That would output a delta J, K for the innermost things over here, your inner contracting and then delta i hat delta l hat like so, okay? So these are how I define the dot operations on the standard bases, right? Either in terms of just the i, j, k, or the i, i, j, i, k, i vectors, or diag tensors. All right, and so now let's do some operations with these things, right? So now let's consider a vector v. I'm going to do a single vector v dot tau bar bar, right? So let me formally write out what this is going to be. This is going to be the sum over i, and so let's keep all the sums before I start to contract, right? The sum over i, and then vi delta i hat. Again, we're sort of being a little bit breezy with our covariate and contravariate until we actually can sort of formalize what those bases mean. I'm doing a single dot with an expression that looks like this, the sum over j, the sum over k, tau j k, delta j, delta k hat, right? And so now I'm going to do these dot presentations. I'm going to get three sums over here. I'm going to have the sum over i, j, and k, three sums, i, j, and k. And I'm going to have a vi, and I'm going to have a tau j, k, like that. And then I'm going to have a delta i, delta j in the direction of delta k. So that's going to be a delta i, j, delta k hat. So I'm going to get a single vector over here. And now what's the effect of this delta i j over here? The effect of this delta i j over here is that we can replace all i's with j. So i has to be equal to j for delta to turn on. And so what we're going to get in that case, so i and j contract in this case, and so you just can get the sum over i and k, the sum over i and k of v i, and then tau j becomes i, k remains k, and k remains k over here. So that's the expression we get for the v dot tau. Now, to show you that there's actually some interesting algebra structure where the commutativity actually plays an important role, let's do the opposite direction over here. So if I considered, if I did this in the opposite direction, if I did tau bar bar dot v, that would be what? That would be the sum. Now, to show you a good example of index balancing, I'll use i and j for tau now, right? It doesn't really matter what the indices we use as long as we're consistent with them. Tau i j, delta i hat, delta j hat, that's a dyadic tensor. I'm going to single dot this with the sum over k now, vk, delta k hat, like so. All right, excellent. And so now what we'll do is this. This is going to be the sum over i, j, and k, i, j, and k, of what? Of tau i, j, v, k, and then I'm going to have a delta i, and then delta jk now. So now, what this delta jk does, that Kronecker symbol, is this is going to replace all the j's with k. So j has to be equal to k here, right? And so this sum over here becomes what? So this sum becomes the sum over i and j. And I'll forget about k, just to show you that there's a connection over here. I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have a tau i j, great. And then a what? Then a vj. than the delta i. Now you might say, great, these things look very similar to each other. But what's the important thing to notice? The important thing to notice is that where am I summing over here? 
over here, I'm summing the VI coefficients on the what? On the corresponding, what we would call like the rows of that diag tense representation. Whereas over here, I'm summing V on the what? On the column. So I'm doing a little bit, something a little bit different over here. So these expressions are not what? Those expressions are not equal. So the order in which you do a what? You do a, you do diag tensor dot a vector or a vector diag tensor plays a role. Now these things are related by transpositions, right? So in other words, there is a relationship between these two expressions over here, but in general, they're not equal to each other, right? So when you're doing contractions of vectors with dyadic tensors in, in that sort of parlance, because these single, eventually we're going to stop calling these dot product operations dot product, and we're going to start calling them contractions. Because what I've really done over here is I've taken three indices, and with this Kronecker function, I've basically contracted three indices to two indices. So I'm basically contracting, I'm doing a dimensional reduction over here, right? I had something that was a dyadic tensor dot with a vector, and it took something that was dyadic tensor, and the output now was a vector, right? So in other words, I'm taking something that's in high dimensions, and I'm contracting it to a smaller dimensional space by this operation. Operation. So this is a contraction operation, and we'll see that these contraction operations, it really depends on the order of, in which your indices are ordered. If you're going to contract on one index versus another index, that's why it's this, as we build up higher dimensional notation, it's going to be very important to stay consistent with which index is going to be up and which index is going to be low to make sure we match them in the appropriate way to make sure we're not making any transposition mistakes with our dyadic tensors. Thank you very much.